Good morning and happy Women's Equality Day. Yes. However, we're here on the steps of City Hall because every day is Equality Day. We're still, we're still fighting for it. If you think back to August 26th, 1920, 102 years ago today, women in the United States of America were finally granted the right to vote, something they should have had long before. Just to give you a little history, and we've been joined by one of my favorite mayors in the United States of America from Oakland, Linda Schwager. Give her a round of applause. The first state to grant women the right to vote here in America. Anybody know? It was in 1869. I'm a history professor, so I'm going to quiz you. Before my time. <laughs> what did you say, Jen? She said Wyoming. That is absolutely correct. And... A further little tidbit, that's why Wyoming is known as the Equality State. Look at that. Oh, you could talk that over at lunch with your friends today. But nevertheless, here we are 102 years later. And how did we get to Women's Equality Day besides commemorating and celebrating the 102nd anniversary of the 19th Amendment granting women the right to vote? Well, it was a congresswoman from New York in the 1970s. Some of you are way too young to remember her. Remember. Linda, who is it? I, 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 I could picture her. Yes, that's right. It was Bella Abzug. Yes, that's so Congressman Bella Abzug. Yes, yeah, she had the hat. She was known for the hats. Very good. I'm going to take my hat off to you. <laughs> Bella Abzug introduced legislation declaring August 26th Women's Equality Day. And that was in 1971. And every president since Richard Nixon has signed a proclamation to enshrine this day as Women's Equality Day. So in Patterson, we are proud to present a proclamation to celebrate Women's Equality Day here, August 26, 2022. So at this time, I want to call forward our friend from the borough of Oakland, Mayor Linda Schwager. Put your hands together for her. Go get him! Oh Go get him! This is so exciting. I, I am on the council in Oakland with six men, and this year we finally have two women running, so oh. I am very excited. Come on, Linda! Thank Let's you! Go. <laughs> but thank you. Thank you. You, all thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Linda Schwager is also known as Rosie the Riveter. We need a lot of Rosie the Riveters here in Patterson and throughout our state and country. Our congressman couldn't make it today, but he sent a representative, a young lady we're very proud of here in the city, Ashante Johnson. Go get him, go get him, go get him. Good afternoon, the city of Patterson and everyone else who's tuning in. Um, I'm Ashanti Johnson from Congressman Pasquale's office representing him today, and it is a proud day for me as a woman in America because America isn't equal until everyone experiences equality. So that's men and women. Right. And just a reminder to all women that we can do any and everything. So it's a day to celebrate that. Um, you know, we bring, we bring, we birth the nation by bringing and procreating, of course, with a man. We get to do things like whatever we want to do, politicians, sports, um, whatever we set our mind to do, we can do. So just remember your strength, physically, mentally, spiritually, and emotionally. We are the ones who keep things together and nurture America. So it's a blessing to be a woman. It's a blessing to be here in America celebrating this day. Have a good day, everyone. I'm Andre Say, and I approve that message. Yes, yes, yes. I'm very fortunate to have been raised by a strong single immigrant mother who drove a bus so that she can ensure that her sons could get a quality education, become productive citizens, and raise their families here in Patterson. But guess what? I was fortunate enough to also have a wife like Farhana, yes. who is remarkable. Everyone knows that I outkicked my coverage with her. <laughs> I hit a home run with my wife. I definitely did. And I will say it till the day I die. I'm proud of that. I really am. And she also said, 
We have to keep fighting to make sure that women get equal pay for equal work. At this time, we're joined by another Pattersonian who's representing the League of Women Voters here in the city of Patterson, the chairwoman of voter services for the League of Women Voters, Lauren Nance. Good morning, good morning, yes, good morning. Lauren, good morning. Let me get comfortable up here. Yes, you do it. For housekeeping purposes, I am Lauren Nance, Voter Services Chair for the League of Women Voters of Patterson, yes. and I am a member of the State Board of Directors. Yes, that yes. is L-A-U-R-E-N-N-A-N-C-E. Mayor Saya, everyone gathered here, especially my neighbors in yes. historic Patterson, New Jersey. We are. I am honored to come before you today on behalf of the League of Women Voters of Patterson and Inga Spungen, who is our president, who couldn't be here with us today. She is on holiday. Inga. Now, first, I must apologize for an error, a typo, if you will, because I often say that typos are complimentary when I'm writing and I make mistakes. We've been calling today Women's Equality Day when we should be calling it something else. In 2022, women are still not equal in our nation, and as a matter of fact, women have fewer rights than we've had in decades. In light of this, the League of Women Voters of the United States has deemed today Women's Inequality Day. Why? Because we still don't have irrevocable voting rights legislation. The Equal Rights Amendment still is not part of the Constitution. And we still do not have full access to reproductive health care for women. And that just doesn't exist right now, considering the state of affairs in our nation. So the League is calling it out. And we're calling on lawmakers to flip the script and set this straight. Yes. Back in 1920, just six months before the certification of the 19th Amendment, which granted some women the right yeah. to vote, the League of Women Voters was founded by the leaders of the suffrage movement. It was created on a simple yet provocative premise in those times, that the power of women could create a more perfect democracy. A democracy that truly meant that government by the people existed and that the majority would rule. That the League would be a nonpartisan organization, meaning that we'll have no parts of the foolishness toward one political party or another. That we were activists, that we be active in our community and not just render lip service. Then that, that type of movement brings about governmental and social change. And we do this at the grassroots level. Right here in these streets of Patterson is where we're getting the work done. But family, my family in Patterson, we can't get you to play a critical role in democracy if you are either A, registered to vote, but you don't vote. B, you don't know how to get registered. C, you want to vote, but maybe you have change of address issues, or maybe someone turns you away at a poll. Or D, maybe you're formally incarcerated and you, think you, and you think that you're not eligible to vote when actually you are. So the list of barriers to voting go on and on and on, and the League of Women Voters of Patterson is committed to doing its part to break down each barrier one by one through voter education. We formally returned to the city back in January of this year after a long hiatus. And thanks to the dedication of a great team that includes Yvette Mascara, who is our state league liaison, Inga Spungen, who is our president, Sarah Anthony, who is our advocacy chair, and yours truly, we're making it happen. Our friend Shaniqua Lemon is also here yeah. today. She has set up a voter registration table so we can answer your questions regarding voter registration. Our current goal focus in the city of Patterson is threefold. One, to raise the number of engaged voters through strategic outreach. Two, to partner with Patterson Public Schools to get our children excited about civics education once again in the classroom. And three, to connect with Patterson organizations who align with our mission. Family, there are people who are counting on us not to vote. 
There are people that are counting on us not to care. There are people are counting on us not to want a better city of Patterson. Let's prove them wrong together. Today, regardless of your gender, start by celebrating the power of women to create change through the power of voting. Get involved in your league, Patterson. This is your league. We're your league, and we serve at your pleasure. Go to the tent, see Shaniqua and myself, get some information, gather yourself, gather your neighbors, gather your family, and just vote. Yes. Yes. Lauren. Lauren, I'm so glad you didn't run for mayor this last election. I probably would have lost. Thank God. Woo. Do want to acknowledge the fact that here at City Hall, strong women work here. In fact, that's a hashtag, strong women work here. Yes, yes there they are. Although I saw you at the Yankee game the other day, I was upset. I really was. I disliked that one on Facebook. But we have directors like Della McCall, our director of community engagement. We have Aishia Hayes, our Director of Policy and Planning. <laughs> Stephanie Pabone, our Director of Personnel. Yes. yes. We have our Deputy Mayor, Maria Del Pilar Rivas. Yes. And we'll get to some more later, but we were talking about voting. Yes, my business administrator who could not be here today, who is a strong woman in her own right, yes. Kathleen M. Long, in absentia, give her a round of applause. Strong women work here. Our tax collector, who probably doesn't want to make public appearances because she's the tax collector, but is Linda Broncano. Give her a round of applause. And we have the president of the Board of Trustees for the Patterson Public Library, Daria Tashkin. And the aforementioned Shaniqua Lemon, who's a commissioner on the library board as well. Give her a round of applause. What's that? Oh yes, we have another director who couldn't be here, our Director of Community Improvement, Barbara McLennan. Did I say that strong women work here? Yes. Speaking of Barbara's, how can we not mention the Vice Chairwoman of the Democratic Party here in Passaic County, my mom, Barbara Tannis. Yes. We'll get to the council people later. <laughs> yes, you will, but you'll get, we'll get, come on, we're building it up to a crescendo. So right now we have a strong woman who has represented us in the General Assembly here in the state of New Jersey and is now our senator here in the 35th Legislative District. Strong women work here. Strong women are here in Patterson. And we're led by Senator Nellie Poe. Yeah. Go get them. Go get them. Thank you so very much, Mayor. Um, I am so thrilled to be here. First, let me just say, uh, Lauren uh, Nance, I was so inspired by your comments. Yes. Thank you so much. That was so wonderful. Thank you, thank you, thank you. To all of you, to our vice chair, to all of the distinguished uh, women that I am uh, standing beside you, alongside of you, to our incredible uh, council members, our leadership here from our council. These are amazing, too, strong women right on the council. You will hear from them yes. each and every time. Uh, Mr. Mayor, thank you. Yes. I, I want to thank uh, the, the League of Women Voters for really putting today a, 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 an agenda that really brings to light the important issue that we are talking about today. And if I can just share with you it's just some thoughts in terms of what I have been doing, what we have been doing in the legislature, but Ms. Nance, we need to do a lot more just like you've indicated, and I'm with you, sister. I am with you here. You know, um, I just want to make, thank you. Among the certain basic rights enshrined, to, enshrined in this country's DNA by virtue of its founding documents, and the wisdom of those who wrote them, the very right to vote freely in the name of preserving our democracy is near the top, if not the top, at the top of the list. As we know, people have shed 
blood to preserve this yes. right. Yes. They have been killed or beaten. Yes. Some have even gone to jail. The right to the franchise, the right to freely cast a, a ballot without encumbrance, these are basic to our yes, republic, yes, yes. and it is very, it's our survival, if you think. Yes. The bill that I want to just give you a little bit of a highlight on, the bill that I am one of the co-primes alongside my colleague, uh, Senator Sandra Cunningham, would reduce standard voting registration deadlines to eight days before election and allow voter registration at the polling places on election day and at offices where mail-in ballots are issued within that 45 day before election, which we all know is vitally important. The most important thing for all of us is to make sure that if we are someone who is legitimately able to vote, yes. that there should be nothing stopping them from yes. being able to yes. carry on that vote, regardless of that status, if you're able to apply and be eligible for that. Yes. It has been very well documented yes. that allowing the same day registration leads yes. to an increase in voter turnout yes. of between two and seven percent points when you think about it. But the most significant gains are seen among our young, our young black and Latino voters yet, yet. This should not be an issue that is important just to one particular constituency or to one particular political party. Access to the ballot is central to our democracy and we must do all we can to make sure that our people have access to that, whether they work one job or two jobs, whether they are single parent whether they are a senior or someone who works ir irregular hours or one who might not always have transportation options. Our bill will provide for more flexibility, will, be better, will better reflect the will of the people who cast ballots. Same day voting should be a no-brainer. Isn't that right, Mayor? Yes, yes. This is a no-brainer yes. issue. This is America. And our democracy depends on the basic rights that include casting a ballot for the candidate of one's choosing. Same-day voter registration will make it simpler for all communities throughout New Jersey to cast their votes and be heard. People have People who will have taken initiative and have the proper credential to be an eligible voter should have the right to show up on election day, register, and be allowed to cast a provisional ballot. They should be allowed to cast their vote. We shouldn't have residents being frozen out of the election process on election day simply because they have either moved or forgot to change their registration. 20 other states, 20 other Come states on. and Washington DC already have yeah, the yeah, same day yeah. voting. And this legislation has the support of nearly 100 mostly New Jersey based organizations. You have some of them represented here today, right? Uh, and those advocacy groups who understand that allowing people greater flexibility in voting will not only increase turnout, but make our institutions stronger and hold those who seek public office more accountable to the constituents whom they are elected to serve. 
Most importantly, allowing more flexibility of voter registration system will automatically allow more people to participate in our democratic system and to have a greater say in our state's future. If we want true representation and more participation, we must allow for greater flexibility. Unlike in some other states where legislators seem to be doing all that they can to keep people from voting, we want to open things up and allow more people to participate in this process. Let's face it, we live in a very, very high-tech world where retailers can uh, confirm your identity, your address, payment options, and your shipment ready to send out in a matter of just a few mouse clicks. <laughs> Allowing people to register to vote on election day should not be, more, should not be much more difficult than that. Right. Yes, voting should be secure. It also fairly, it's also fairly easy to do adding a little bit more convenience to the process of casting that ballot should be a welcome change to anyone who cares about preserving our freedom and personal liberty principles and upon which this nation was found mr mayor let me just say i am proud to stand beside you here today and with all of you ladies behind us for such an important event and to talk about issues about what it, it is important to us. Yes, it is time, as Lauren said, it is time. Women's Equality Day should be just that, equal to each and every one of us, and we are here to fight, continue to fight for that. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Thank Senator. You, Thank you. Senator, you're absolutely right. It is a no-brainer, because as you know, you've been through many elections, and your adrenaline, you get adrenalized during the elections, and you're shaking hands, encouraging people to go to the polls, and then you get a few people that say, I'm not registered to vote. Well, for those people that are not registered to vote, this bill will afford you the opportunity to register on the same day that we all go out and vote, so that we expand access to the opportunity to go and exercise your right to vote. On our city council, we have not one, not two, but three women yes. representing the city of Patterson. Yes. Mayor Linda Schwager is jealous because she's the only woman standing in Oakland. But well, hopefully not for long, right? Hopefully not. And it reminds me, although I wasn't there, Senator, 1848 in Seneca Falls, the Women's Rights Convention, where in response to the Declaration of Independence that was issued in 1776, the women that gathered there, the suffragettes, issued their Declaration of Sentiments, expressing the fact that they wanted equality. And here we are almost 200 years later, still expressing sentiments for equality. So ladies and gentlemen, we have with us a young lady who made history, the first Latina to get elected as a councilwoman at large and served not one, not two, but three terms as a council president here in the city of Patterson, the honorable councilwoman at large, Maritza Davila. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mayor. Thank you very much to everyone. I'm just so thankful to God to be alive another day. And I'm thankful for that single mom also that raised four children, of which three were uh, females. You know, and I'm also thankful and grateful for all of those that um, have assisted me because every day is a challenge. Every day in our city, in the United States, and nationally speaking, it is a challenge for us women. I work with wonderful women. You know, I'm happy to have our Director of Admissions for Passaic County Community College here, Ashley Castiglia. I'm happy to have here on my right hand, our Dean, uh, uh, Tanya Anderson, and yeah, so many Tanya, other women please. year after year. Uh, the mayor mentioned, he said, P, C, 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 how many C's? And I 
I said, but the most important C, what is it? it's community. Yes. It's a community in Passaic County Community College. And I've been there for almost 30 years, and I have to say that daily, on a daily basis, I'm confronted with so many issues with young ladies that unfortunately have not had any guidance to be able to move on and to go into higher education. And let me tell you, I've been that key along with other individuals. And I will say also this, you, as always, have been an inspiration to me. You know, you as well as we have in the assembly another strong woman, Assemblywoman Shavanda Sumter. I'm thankful today that, yes, I am the first elected as at large, but I don't want to be the last. Yeah, we have to continue yeah. to empower other females, and that is through education. And yes, voting is very important. In addition, I want to call up my two other strong yes. councilwomen, the dean of the council, former mayor, fourth ward councilwoman cotton and our councilwoman at large second term highest vote getter councilwoman dr lalisa mims very good very good and by the way councilwoman cotton was the first woman african-american to serve as mayor of the city of patterson yes. thank you thank you mayor i want to say thank you and and i'm honored to be here to stand here today and you know for years we as women, it's been very hard. But you know what? I always follow women like Nellie Poe, like Elise Evans, like Sharonda Sumter, like Lieutenant Governor Sheila Oliver. I follow those ladies because you know what? People need strong women and people to represent them. Back in the day, most people did not know elected officials. But I want you to know my name. And my name is Councilwoman Ruby Cotton because hey. it's so important that we, we work hard together and we must provide everything that we must do to make it. And it's not been easy to struggle because we as women take care of homes, husbands, children, grandparents, grandmothers, mothers, fathers, and we still stand here and do what we need to do as women. And I think that it's so important and I appreciate it. and I thank God just give me the strength to be able to stand here today to say that I've been on a long journey and the journey is still going to be there, but I'm going to get over the huddle because we're all going to make it. And I can say that. God bless you all. Thank you. Yes. Yes. That was good. That was good. You got it. You got it. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I'm tall. This mic is a little short. <laughs> So I have to say, to stand with all of these amazing women, all to my right, to my left, it is an honor because it has been statistically proven that women rock the vote. I'm going to say that again. It is statistically proven that women rock the vote. Let's never get it twisted. We love our men. I'm not putting our men down, but statistically, it is proven that women rock the vote. When you go through the nation, through the county, through the state, and even locally, and you look and do the statistics of the demographic of the voters, you will always find women at the top of getting the vote out. So as I stand here today with all of these amazing women, one of my mentors, Senator Nellie Poe, who I love and admire so greatly, when I saw my sister, Lauren Nance, her mom is one of my greatest mentors, yes. Reverend Teresa Nance, yes. Cotton, Councilwoman Davila, Co-Chair Barbara Tannis, yes. and so many others that are standing here. It is an amazing day when we talk about women. July 22nd, my mom was rushed to the hospital from her job. They misdiagnosed her, and thank God for my sister and myself, making a phone call to our police chief and our captain to meet us at her building and rush her back to the hospital. And from that day, it gave me a new perspective of the strength of a woman. It made me open my eyes to understand that even when people and things and situations knock us down and make us want to give up, we're like Weeble Wobble Dolls. We may fall down, but we get back up. Even when they try to mute our voice and make us feel subservient or want us to sit in the back and don't really give you the credit that you deserve, our mouths get wider. 
and we write legislation, and then we go out and we vote, and then we knock on the door and tell our neighbors to vote, and we tell our children to vote, and then we tell our cousins and our nephews and our aunties and our uncles, we get them out to vote because we understand the power in voting. And so I'm gonna say this as I skedaddle back to the back of, the, uh, back of this uh, plethora of great women. Don't ever forget the power that you have in voting. Don't ever forget the power and the work that you get done every day. Don't ever forget the power that you have in encouraging somebody and telling them to do what is right. And I quote the short paraphrase of a scripture. Continue to strengthen that which remains. All of the things that have been left, all of the things you've been through is in the past. There are things that are propelling you forward. Your faith is still strong. Your peace is still strong. Your joy is still strong. Your love is still strong. Keep strengthening that. And women, keep rocking the vote. Women, keep being classy. Women, keep being beautiful. And women, stay united. And let's keep doing this because we're better together. God bless you and God bless the great city of Patterson. Women. That's it. If you're not fired up after this, I don't know what it's going to take. I mean, and it's hot out here, too. It is hot. But guess what? <laughs> Women can take the heat. Yes, yes you know it, Chief Lorenzo. You know it. I want to acknowledge from the Hawthorne Board of Education, the trustee, Commissioner Jennifer Erin Trout. And her name, Erin Trout. Erin is for honor. Trout is for trust. That's true, isn't it true? Yeah, yeah, I just looked that up. The power of Google. We have a councilwoman from Garfield. They call her Sugar. Councilwoman Bench. Thank you for joining us, Sugar. You're way too sweet for the city of Patterson right now. So we know what's at stake here in Patterson. We know what's at stake in this state of New Jersey. The senator outlined it. Hopefully we could serve as a model for other municipalities to get on board and get with it. That's right. As a matter of fact, I mentioned her earlier, but she's just joined us. Our tax collector, Linda Broncano. <laughs> Believe it or not, she was with a disgruntled taxpayer. I told you she does not need to make public appearances. <laughs> when are the tax bills going out? Anyway. <laughs> To close our program is a young lady we're proud of here in Passaic County and in Patterson. As a matter of fact, her mother was a councilwoman in the first ward in the city of Patterson. Councilwoman D. Mark Antonio, ladies and gentlemen, our vice chairman of the Passaic County Democratic Party, Barbara Tannis. Oh, that's right, the trustee, vice chairwoman. P C C C C C, but community. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Mayor. This is a great turnout. For yes. A great day. Now, I know we're pushing voter registration, but keep in mind, our job does not end at voter registration. Yes. Right. Our Whoa. job Tell is to follow up yes. and make sure these people. Get the vote yeah. out. Yes. Yeah. Now, Mayor, for your information, uh -oh. two days ago, the Philadelphia Inquirer reported that this is the biggest gender gap yeah. in voter yeah. registration. It's a 12% female dominant gender gap. So that's in our favor. So we have to get every one of these women off their butts oh. to the polls. Whoa. We know how this works. Yes. Call them, harass them, keep calling them. And if they voted by mail, please follow up on those vote by mail ballots. Unfortunately, in our last election, 8,000 ballots in State County were never returned. Wow. This what? can't happen again. 
No, that's oh. not so we have to follow up on voter registration. We have to follow up on DBMs, vote by mail ballots. Again, ladies, thank you for being here. And remember what Maya Angela said. A wise woman yes. wants to be, does not want to be anybody's enemy. That's right. But a wise woman refuses to be anybody's victim. Yeah. Oh. Woo. I don't know about you, but she should have dropped the mic on that one. <laughs> Thank you. Another round of applause for our Vice Chairwoman Barbara Tannis, her son Michael Strocco, Hawthorne Alliance. Thank you for joining us. Carol Quadrado, Chief of Staff for Senator Nellie Poe. Thank you for being with us today here. So powerful woman in her own right. That's right. And under Sheriff Umberto Quadrado, not a powerful woman, but representing the Sheriff Richard H. H. Burdnick. So from the Seneca Falls to the Great Falls, yes. we are here with great women, and we are grateful. Yeah. Right, Law Director Eamon Abushi and Chief of Staff Christian Caligari? Yeah. You better be grateful. You just got married. Your wife will have your head. <laughs> Congratulations, by the way. He outkicked his coverage, too, if, once you meet his wife. <laughs> but ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to end by quoting one of my favorite American philosophers. Beyonce Knowles. <laughs> Who runs the world? Girl. Done. Thank you very much. Happy Women's Equality Day. Thank you.